In this third part of the module on point pattern analysis, we'll go over a number of descriptive statistics. These are classic traditional methods that have been used to summarize the main features of the point pattern. And we'll cover three in particular. One is centrography, which is a very geometrically oriented way to summarize the point pattern. The next one is both a descriptive statistic and also can be used as a test statistic, and it's quadrat counts, counts of points in a quadrat or a polygon. And then thirdly is the use of intensity functions, also known as kernel functions or heat maps even. So let's start with centrography, which is uh, basically a very simple type of descriptive statistic of the point locations using the coordinates in the x and y dimension as a random variable. And so basically, you take the x coordinates and compute its, the characteristics of its distribution, such as the central tendency and the spread around the central tendency. And you do the same for the y coordinates. And then you use this information, specifically the mean and the standard deviation, to Develop, develop a number of different types of visualizations. So the, the obvious measures of central tendency would be the mean and the median. And also a little less traditional is the center of minimum distance is, is a point that optimizes the uh, access, so to speak, to all the other points. The measures of dispersion, are, as I mentioned, are based on the value of the standard deviation and they're visualized either as a rectangle in what is called a standard deviation box or as a circle in what is called a standard distance circle or as an ellipse which is called the standard deviation ellipse. So let's start with central tendency. Uh, very straightforward. The mean center is the point that we get when we take the average of all the x-coordinates and the average of all the y-coordinates. So again, you take the x and the y as random variables, you compute the moments, and then you combine them in an x-y-coordinate. Median center, same idea. You compute the median of the x-coordinates and the median of the y-coordinates and the xy combination of those median values is the median center. And the central feature or the point of minimum cumulative distance is a little bit more complicated to compute. It's basically the solution to an optimization problem and it yields xy coordinates for these. In our Chicago example, the point locations of the supermarkets in Chicago in 2014 right now, um, we see the, the mean center as the plus, the red plus sign, and the median center as the blue X sign, the blue cross. Uh, the minimum center of minimum distance of the central feature is basically the same as the median distance. And you can't see it very well, but it's a little triangle um, superimposed on the X sign. So as such, these um, measures of central tendency are, are rather limited. They give you a, a quick overview of where the core of the activity is, so to speak. So for example, in criminology, one could look at the movement of, uh, say, drug arrests over time from month to month. You could do that, for example, with the San Francisco crime examples, uh, crime data. And, or you, you could, uh, assess whether the center of activity stays may basically in the same place or whether it moves, for example, as the result of police intervention or some other factors which you then try to investigate. But the more interesting um, description is when you combine the central tendency with a measure of the spread around the central tendency, which is um, the standard deviation. So again, just to recap, we get the standard deviation just as we would from any other variable, but we get them from the x and the y coordinates. The first visualization is, as I mentioned, a rectangle. It's called the standard deviation box. It is centered on the mean center with its sides 
parallel to the main axes and the, the sides are proportional to the standard deviation. Specifically, um, at least in this implementation that we illustrate here, each side is two standard deviations. So if we look at the Chicago example again, we see the box, the red box centered on the mean center and the side in the x direction is equals two standard deviations and in the y direction the same thing. So in this particular example this highlights the fact that there is more dispersion in the vertical direction than in the horizontal direction which is primarily due to the shape of the city of Chicago along Lake Michigan. A second way to visualize this is what is called the standard distance circle. Again, it is centered on the mean center. It's a circle, so it's equal in all directions, and the radius is computed from the standard deviation in the x and y direction. So rather than taking them each separately as we do in the standard deviation box, we summarize these two measures um, by a simple rule of a right triangle, the hypotenuse, and so basically we compute the radius as the square root of the sum of the squares of the standard deviations, or in other words, the sum of the variances in the y and the x direction, we take the square root of that, and that gives us the radius of the circle. So this gives a summary measure of the spread, but it ignores any kind of directional effect or um, axial effect. Like in the rectangle, um, we see a difference between the standard deviations in the x and the y direction. In the standard distance circle, this is um, subsumed into one overall radius, and we see the radius here centered on the mean center, and it even exceeds extends beyond our, our bounding box uh, in this particular case. The most inter interesting of the three is what is called the standard deviation ellipse. And again, it's centered on the mean center, but in contrast to the circle and the rectangle in the box, it allows for directional effects. So it's a little bit more complicated to compute. We won't get into the specific algorithm here, but basically one finds the um, direction of maximum variability, maximum dispersion, and that forms, dictates the angle of the major elliptical axis. And then, of course, the minor elliptical axis is orthogonal to that. And the, the, the length of the axes and the actual uh, drawing of the ellipse um, is, again, one standard deviation from the center. So the ellipse is no longer parallel to the axis as, it, as the box was, but now it shows a directional effect. And in this case, it very nicely parallels the shore of Lake Michigan and, and, and shows how the shape of the city dictates the spread of the points around the mean center. So the, there are two important aspects here of the ellipse. One, of course, is the, the direction, the angle of the major axes, which gives the summary of the direction where the most spread is around the center, so where the, the, the points are most dispersed. And then orthogonal to that is the, uh, the band that is most compact in some sense relative to that. And again, what we're interested in is the, the size of this ellipse, which reflects the standard deviation of the coordinates and the angle, the direction of the ellipse. And um, in practice, this is used, as I mentioned, quite a bit in applied criminology and by analysts in various police departments. It's also built into a, a number of... Um, GIS software pack packages and also CrimeStat, which is uh, particularly developed by the National Institute of Justice to assist crime analysts. It provides a very quick summary of the pattern and particularly 
it allows comparative analysis. So comparative analysis either between different types of patterns, for example, different types of crimes, or comparative analysis over time, as I mentioned, following one particular type of crime, like um, serial burglaries or, or something similar to that, over time, to see whether the, the pattern changes in nature, changes in structure. And just to uh, pull it all together, here are two graphs with um, all three visualizations. So the red rectangle is the standard deviation box. And, and on the left, we have the locations of the supermarkets. And on the right, we have the locations of the liquor stores. There's actually more, many more liquor stores in Chicago than supermarkets. And you see they're very similar. Both of them reflect the overall shape of the city. They're a little bit um, off um, in, in terms of the, their center. The supermarkets seem to be a little less spread out in the, in the minor direction. And the other aspect, which is a technical aspect that you see very nicely illustrated here, is how the radius of the standard deviation, the circle, the standard circle, is uh, computed or constructed from the two standard deviations, one in the x direction and one in the y direction. So this is a very nice, quick and dirty summary tool, but it, isn't, it doesn't go very far and it definitely doesn't explain anything.